In this video, I'll be showing you how to solve first order differential equation using the variable separable method. Okay, now the first question is this x squared multiplied by dy dx is equal to x into y minus 1. Question 2 says x into dy dx is equal to y plus x squared y. Alright, we're asked to solve these two first order differential equations. Now, solution. How do we solve these particular questions? What do we do? My first task here is to um, write out the question. So I'm given x squared. So this is x squared multiplying dy dx. x squared multiplying dy dx is equal to x into what I have here is now y minus 1. So x into y minus 1. And I'm asked to solve this particular question. All right, this is a first order differential equation. Now, to solve this, the first thing you have to notice is that in our previous classes, we dealt with the direct integration method, all right, in which if you observe for my direct integration method, it was always dy dx being equal to a function in terms of x. That means all the term here, we are all in terms of x. But in this particular question here, if you observe, you have terms in terms of not just x, but also y. So in the case where you're seeing terms in terms of not just x, but also y, you shift your focus from direct integration method to variable separable method. All right. All right. So having said that, how does this work? What do you do? Just as the name says, variable separable. So I'll be separating the variables. Okay. I will take all terms pertaining to y, I'll take them to dy, and all terms that has x to dx. All right, that's what you do. Now, first things first, I want to cross multiply. And in cross, cross multiplying, all you have to do is to move the x up here. Right? If I do that, I will have this as x squared dy. It's equal to x into y minus 1, then dx. This is mathematically correct. Or you can say multiply both sides by dx. You have this particular equation here. All right, that's the first thing you have to do. Next up, we want to move everything concerning y to dy as well as everything containing x to dx. What do we do there? Now, in this case, first things first, I want to divide here by x squared so that dy will stand alone. Also divide here by x squared. All right? And if I do that, what do I have here? This cancels this. I'm having dy. It's equal to from here x here, 1, x here, you have x, all right? This was x squared. So if x squared cancels this, I'm left with just one of the x, all right? So I have this. This into, for the numerator here, I have y minus y minus 1, that's y minus 1, all multiplied by dx. This all over, for the denominator, I'm left with just x, this particular x here, this one here, all right? So all over x, so I have this. Now what's the next task to do here? If I look at this question here, I have tried to separate variables, as the name says, but I can still see a y term here, or perhaps a y minus 1 term here. So I want to move that y minus 1 term over to this part, this part here. What do I do? The tax would just be to multiply both sides by 1 all over 1 minus y, or simply bring 1 minus y as a denominator. Right? It's just simply change of subject of formula. That's the concept. And if I do that, let's say multiply multiply by 1 all over y minus 1 so that I can cancel the term here, all right? If I do that, I have this as 1 all over y minus 1 multiplying dy is equal to 1 all over y minus 1 multiplying what I have here, that's y minus 1, uh, y minus 1 into dx. This, of course, all over x here. So all divided by x. So divide this by x. All right, so I have this. From here, of course, we can put this in bracket like this if you want to. It's correct mathematically. We can see that y minus 1 cancels y minus 1, and it's gone. From here, I now have 1 all over y minus 1. This will give you dy. Of course, multiply by dy. It's equal to, for here, I'll be left with 1, 
So 1 times 1 gives you 1. That becomes 1 all over x. So 1 all over denominator here, x. And then my integral variable here, dx. So this dx. So with this now, we have separated the variables, okay? We've taken um, everything that pertains y to the y, as well as everything that pertains x to the x. So with this, we have now separated variable. Now let's proceed with this. The next will now be integrate both sides, all right? So integrating both sides. If you integrate both sides, what do you get? Now let's integrate the first, the left hand side, the integral of 1 all over y minus 1 is equal to the integral of 1 all over x dx. So we have this. So this is simply integrating both sides. So what do we have there? Now record that if I integrate 1 over x, what I'll have there is lean x. All right. We've discussed this in our previous class on integration. I'll leave the link in the video description. The same concept also happens when you integrate 1 all over x plus 1. This will give you lean, what you have here, x plus 1. If I integrate 1 all over x minus 3, I will have lean x minus 3. All right? This condition only works if the power of x is 1. So you can see here it's 1. It's 1. So it becomes this. So this is what it will look like if I integrate. Now use this concept here. The same thing, of course, this is this into the dy here. All right? This is the dy here. So dy here. So if I integrate this now, you'd see that I would have the same answer. All right. If this was x, I'd have had lean x minus 1. Now integrate um, with respect to y, I will still have the same thing there, which is lean y minus 1. That's integrating this part here. It's equal to, if I integrate 1 over x, I have lean x. So I'm done with this. Now add your constant plus c, the constant of integration. I have this. Now I'm proceeding with this. If I have this here, I think we can solve this, yeah? Um, all I have to do is move lean x over here. So I'm having lean y minus 1. Lean x moves over here, becomes negative lean x, all right? It's equal to c. So the positive lean x moves over here, becomes negative lean x plus c. I have this. Now, how do you solve this? Don't forget that the term lean, if you say lean, lean a simply means log so lean means log to base e then a all right so it's called the natural log of a number and also from log reading we know that log let's say 2 minus log 3 this one here in log reading is simply log 2 over 3 that's the concept there so that means if i have lean 2 minus lean 3 this can be written as lean becomes this all over this, which is 2 all over 3. That's the concept. So if this is true, bring this concept here. What do you have here? I'm having this lean. I'm having this lean. Take um, the lean there. I'm having lean into, this becomes y minus 1. So y minus 1 all over what I have here, which is what there? x. So I have this. It's equal to c. So I have this. Now, again, I told you earlier that lean simply means but. I told you earlier that lean simply means log to base e. So if I say lean this, what it simply means is simply log to base e into y minus 1 all over x. It's equal to c. So I have this. All right. Lean means this. Now, again, recall that log of 32 to base 2 it's equal to 5 if you recall how um if you recall the relationship between indices and logarithm you'd know that this can still be written as the base 2 all to power the answer 5 is equal to what you have here 32 so 32 is equal to the base raised to power the answer okay bring the concept here what does it mean here it means this one here which is y minus 1 all over x is equal to the base that's exponential raised to the answer that's c so we have this all right so this is correct next thing i want to do here is to move x this way all right so i'm having y minus 1 is equal to if i move x it becomes x exponential c 
or you can say multiply both sides by by x or simply cross multiply you have this as your answer now finally i want to move minus one over here so it becomes plus one so y will be equal to um x exponential c plus one or better still you can see that y is equal to one plus x exponential c so this is correct so basically this is how we solve this question let's look at the b part or the second question in this particular video all right so let's look at the second question there so question number two you're giving x into dy dx it's equal to y plus x squared y okay so how do you solve this particular question what do you do now my first tax here of, of, of course as usual would be